As former NSA contractor Edward Snowden revealed in 2013, the US government routinely spies on its own citizens. I, sitting at my desk, uh, certainly had the authorities to, to wiretap anyone from you or your accountant to a federal judge to even the president if I had a personal email. And they lied about it. Does the NSA collect any type of data at all on millions or hundreds of millions of Americans? No, sir. It does not. Not wittingly. Four years after the Snowden leaks, the government is still collecting Americans' private information. The NSA claims it ended bulk collection of domestic phone calls, but the agency still operates several far-reaching domestic spying programs. Now there's a way to end this unconstitutional practice. The NSA gets its authority to spy on Americans under Section 702 of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. But the law expires this year after it hits its five-year sunset, and lawmakers will soon be debating whether to renew it for another five or even permanently. Here's why it's vital they let it lapse and don't renew 702. The Attorney General and Director of National Intelligence may authorize the targeting of persons reasonably believed to be located outside the United States to acquire foreign intelligence information. That's the text of the controversial Section 702. It's a statute that allows the government to collect communications between foreign targets and Americans without obtaining a warrant, uh, without showing probable cause uh, or really any level of suspicion of wrongdoing. Uh, the reason that Section 702 supposedly is useful is so that uh, the NSA can spy on foreigners abroad without having to get a search warrant every time they want to open a wiretap. The problem is they're actually using it to spy on Americans. U.S. officials have admitted 702 isn't just about spying on foreigners. In the run-up to authorizing it, former NSA head Michael Hayden even said, communications with one end in the United States are the ones that are most important to us. Government officials, when they try to defend uh, the breadth of Section 702 surveillance and the fact that communications of Americans are being obtained without a warrant, point to the fact that the target has to be a foreigner overseas and that any collection of Americans' information is incidental. We hear that word over and over. It's just incidental. Communications incidentally collected. Incidentally acquired under the so-called incidental collection issue. Incidental U.S. person collection. Incidentally. Incidentally. That word has a particular legal meaning, um, which is somewhat in tension with the common sense meaning. I think anybody listening to that statement, oh, our communications of Americans are picked up only incidentally, um, would get the sense that the government's not really interested in those communications, that th those communications are, are picked up in some way almost accidentally. Um, and that's not the case at all. There are safeguards in the law intended to limit the powers granted by Section 702. The government may not intentionally target any person located in the United States and variations on that theme. But the Snowden leaks revealed the existence of two massive domestic surveillance programs operating under 702. Under the PRISM program, the government will approach Google or Microsoft or one of those companies and say, here is a target, here's the target's email address, we want all of the e stored emails that you have for that target. Then there's upstream surveillance. The NSA forced telecom providers to install surveillance equipment along their physical networks so they can capture millions of emails and messages in real time, kind of like a wiretap on everyone who uses the internet. From there, they created massive searchable databases. Think Google, but for searching the private emails of American citizens. The FBI routinely searches through databases that include communications that have been picked up through Section 702 surveillance uh, whenever it conducts an investigation, whether a national security investigation uh, or an ordinary criminal investigation. The FBI, of course, is not a foreign intelligence uh, organization. It's a domestic law enforcement organization. So we, I mean, we know that FBI is using what is supposed to be a foreign intelligence system for domestic law enforcement. Not only were agents capturing and reading messages between Americans and foreign targets, 
They were capturing messages written by Americans about foreign targets. Imagine you wrote an email to a friend and mentioned something about a suspected terrorist that you read about in the news in the body of the message. Under 702, government agents can read that email. If you're collecting communications, not just to a target, not just from a target, but communications that merely mention a target or information associated with that target, you are much more likely to pick up entirely innocent communications that are of no interest to you. Uh, not to mention, uh, you're more likely to pick up communications that are wholly domestic between two Americans. The NSA ended about collection after being ordered to examine the practice by the courts. But the agency has other tricks for surveilling Americans under 702. Reverse targeting is when the government's actual intent is to get information about a particular known American. But instead, they choose a target uh, who is a, a foreigner overseas, presumably knowing that the American will be in contact with that person. Reverse targeting is technically prohibited under 702, so agents use a workaround called a backdoor search. I think that backdoor searches are a form of reverse targeting. Now, backdoor searches are when the government goes into the court, says, we are not targeting any particular known Americans. We have no interest in any particular known Americans. Our only interest here is in the foreign targets. Collects the data based on that representation and then immediately goes looking through the data for the information of particular known Americans. The NSA even has uh, cutesy code names for some of these abuses. Love Int is the cutesy code name for spying on your ex at the NSA. It's done enough that they actually have a nickname for spying on your ex. Even the secretive FISA courts, which oversee the intelligence agencies, have questioned the methods by which the NSA has exploited the law to expand its powers. Documents recently made public revealed that the FISA judges accused the NSA of displaying an institutional lack of candor and ignoring a very serious Fourth Amendment issue when it hid the fact that its agents were knowingly surveilling U.S. targets. So when the FISA court says, that there's a culture of non-compliance at NSA, that doesn't come as a shock to us at all. Um, what does come as a shock to us is when NSA Director Rogers sits in front of the Senate Intelligence Committee and says there's never been an intentional violation. Have there been any instances involving a deliberate or intentional compliance violation? Admiral Rogers? Not that I'm aware of. The Office of the Director of National Intelligence has made public some transparency reports, and the most recent release indicates that the government is currently surveilling more than 94,000 people or organizations with techniques authorized under 702. And how many Americans' communications are read under 702? We don't know for sure. The Office of the Director of National Intelligence last year uh, promised EFF and a number of other civil liberties groups a number, an estimate of how much data um, that is purely domestic gets swept up. Uh, and then just a couple of weeks ago, the new DNI, Dan Coates, uh, went back on that promise. There were extensive efforts on the part of, uh, I learned, on the parts of NSA to try to come to, to get, get you an appropriate answer. We were not <laughs> able Director, to do that. Respectfully. Trump campaign officials and associates themselves seem to have been caught in the surveillance dragnet when they allegedly talked to and about Russian targets. Yet administration officials have made it clear they want 702 renewed without any further changes. The fact that the Trump administration can, out of one side of its mouth, complain about, uh, about collection under 702 and on the other uh, say we must you know, snap our fingers and, and reauthorize it, uh, possibly even without a sunset, which is something that we've heard coming out of uh, the White House and Capitol Hill, is, is mind-boggling. If the government is conducting surveillance to find out who you talk to, and, and if you're an American and you have a Fourth Amendment reasonable expectation of privacy, then this should not be done through programmatic surveillance, warrantless surveillance. It's time that you know, warrantless collection of Americans' communications stop. And that means not reauthorizing 702. The American people never even got to hear a debate when these programs began in secret under President Bush and only started to hear about it under President Obama after Edward Snowden leaked information that the government never wanted us to hear. 
it's time to put a real check on the growing, vast powers of our intelligence agencies, while we still can.